Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Bauman. <clears throat> I'm a faculty at the Brown School from Social Work at Washington University in St. Louis. And I'm very excited to talk about this topic of implementation science and reframing it to address inequities in healthcare delivery with you today. Before I move forward, I want to recognize my collaborators, um, the many people that I've talked about this topic, in particular, Dr. Leopoldo Cabasa, who, um, with whom I have, we have this article that's under review. Uh, and a lot, of we're talk, a lot of what we're talking about today is outlined in the article. A note, this is a very complex topic. Uh, for every single slide that we're gonna talk about here, uh, we can have several hours of the conversation. I would love to hear your thoughts. So ping me in the Twitter land, email me, uh, share your thoughts on how we can uh, help and, and think about implementation science and healthcare uh, inequities in healthcare delivery. So inequities in healthcare delivery uh, are unjust differences between populations in the access, use, quality, and outcomes of care. And here's the thing that once I started learning more about implementation science just troubled me, right? The field of implementation science was born to improve the quality of healthcare delivery by implementing evidence-based practice guidelines and tools in usual care. That's the definition of implementation science, right? So what is happening and why are we not decreasing disparities in healthcare? Before we talk further, I want to highlight a couple of things. One is the definition of vulnerable population. Uh, I want to be very thoughtful about how we define a vulnerable population. Um, this article by Katz et al. Um, really outlines how that word of vulnerable population is being perhaps sometimes misused or used in a very vague form. So here we're talking about racial and ethnic minorities, indigenous groups, socioeconomically disadvantaged communities, and sexual and gender minorities. Two other important definitions are the distinction between equality and equity. As you can see, equality is giving exactly the same thing for everyone, regardless of their need. So in, in that sense could be say, delivering the A intervention and intervention to everyone in your study. Equity on the other hand is tailoring what you're giving to the specific population, to the specific need of the population. So we are gonna focus here on equity. Problem is inequities in healthcare delivery is complex, right? You have factors at the clinical encounter, at the patient factor, the provider factor, the healthcare delivery factor, uh, and all of those are permeated by cultural context in terms of racism, um, discrimination, a, a long history of several factors, right? So it's not an easy thing to tackle. As we talk about uh, implementation science and equity, I would love for you to put a pause and think about your own studies. Who are the participants involved in your implementation studies? How do you select the intervention in your studies? And how do you implement the intervention for everyone? I would love for you to keep thinking of those, about those questions as we move forward in the presentation. Because here are a couple of the dangerous assumptions that uh, we might have faced as a field, uh, three fields in this case. One on the top, when we think about the field of cultural adaptation, there's a whole field board uh, in, in to address how to adapt interventions for minority population. Their frameworks, their methods, uh, we've learned a lot about in that field. But there is a dangerous assumption that says all that we need to do is adapt the interventions and then people will use it. However, those adapted interventions are not being implemented in usual care. From the field of health disparities, we've learned a lot about how to test the efficacy and effect effectiveness of those interventions for minority populations. Problem is, again, those interventions are not being implemented in usual care. 
From the field of implementation science, on the other hand, if you take a look at how we're talking and how we're even reporting the participants and the studies that we have, there is a fine line and a dangerous assumption that says one size fits all. When you scale intervention, all that you need to do is just go ahead and do it and everybody will improve in a similar way. Those are the interesting assumptions. And what we would like to propose here is that we need to have a better bridge and talk with different, different field of implementation science with different fields. Here in this particular presentation, we're talking about the field of healthcare disparities research. And we're proposing that by infusing implementation science with an equity approach, perhaps we can start addressing inequities in healthcare. This is the bridge. And so uh, by reframing implementation science, we're thinking about uh, using one of the models by Proctor et al. Can we all agree that we have enough frameworks? We have enough, right? Rachel Tabak et al. have shown on their paper that we have 60 plus. The idea here is not necessarily to develop a new framework, but to use one of the main frameworks uh, in, to address equity in, in healthcare. And we're gonna go through this. We're using those five main topics, focus on reach from the very beginning, design and select interventions with implementation in mind, implement what works, develop the science of adaptations and use an equity lens for implementation outcomes. Focusing on reach from the very beginning. Here's the thing, there's data, tons of data, showing that there's an underrepresentation of vulnerable populations in clinical trials. This is just an example showing underrepresentation of Hispanics for mental health disorder trials. We've seen this for cancer, we've seen this for many other disorders in the US and globally. So the question then here is, when we think about the science of implementation science, we usually focus on the implementation strategies and how those then we can implement the intervention that has been tested. But if the implementation that has been tested was tested and developed with one particular population in say a middle um, or high income setting, that intervention is not necessarily, the outcomes of that intervention is not necessarily representative, representative of vulnerable populations. So we're proposing that we need to think carefully, where are we recruiting? Who are we recruiting? In what settings are we doing our trials? The attention to reach is not a new thing. We have several articles published in terms of thinking who is recruiting the participants? Where do you recruit them? Because there are issues of safety, of access. How do you recruit them? Using word of mouth, using technology. Because here's the thing, you might have the same intervention, but depending on the context, you might have different reach and different access to that intervention. So it's not just about intervention, right? We implementation scientists know context matters. And now we want, we want to encourage you to think about context in the sense of reaching and approaching those who actually need to be in our interventions. Design and select interventions with implementation in mind. It's not just about reach, right? A lot of the interventions that we have done that have been proven to be efficacious are very costly and are not necessarily adaptable to the context. So the idea here is to design and select interventions with implementation in mind. Partner with your stakeholders, focus on end users, and consider the ecology of practice. Several people have written about this um, using particip participatory methods, using uh, user-centered design methods to develop interventions that are more flexible so then cost 
in particular, flexibility and feasibility are variables that are taken into account at the moment of designing the intervention. Once you have interventions, implement what works and develop strategies to help reduce inequities in care. We have interventions that have shown to work and decrease disparities in care, but they're not being implemented in usual care. So what is happening? The field of healthcare disparities research have been really successful in detecting whether the disparities exist, understanding why they exist, and intervening. Do they exist and do they work? But the field of implementation science could then benefit from all of that work and vice versa, the field of disparities research could then benefit from the field of implementation science in thinking about multiple levels in how to eliminate inequities in care. So let's talk about strategies. We have those interventions, but are we really thinking about implementation strategies in the context of vulnerable populations? Because we have compilations, right, of implementation strategies. Those compilations have been adapted for other settings, say school settings. And now I was, we wonder if, for example, we need to highlight strategies that are particular in, for addressing inequities in healthcare delivery. Trust, we know, is a thing that's very important when we talk about vulnerable population. Partnership, ownership, building capacity, resources, and cultural competency. As you do those, as you think about the strategies and perhaps you adapt the strategies or develop new strategies or think about adapting the compilations, we would like to encourage you to think about developing a science of adaptation. Can we all agree that adaptation happens? Here's the thing. You do not brush your teeth the same way every single day, right? As a number of us have talked about, adaptation is not something good or something bad. It just happens, we're humans. So we also have shown in the cultural adaptation field that adaptation to the intervention level is important for reaching, recruiting, and retention of minority populations at the intervention level. We've shown that those are important. The problem now is how are we gonna track the adaptations that are happening at the intervention level, right? So there's a lot of work showing that methods such, inter such as interviews, real-time worksheets, uh, checklists are important for us to think about the science of adaptations. We have frameworks. Um, to, to think about what are the multiple levels and what are the components that you can think about adapting. But we haven't really talked about uh, adapting implementation strategies and we really haven't done a lot of good work in thinking about how adapting interventions and adapting strategies and adapting the context and affect implementation services um, implementation outcomes, service outcomes, and client outcomes. And so as you think about all of this and the adaptation and the relationship between all of those moving pieces, here's another moving piece. We would like uh, us to think a little bit more about using an equity lens as you develop and implement and sustain your interventions. Because an evidence-based intervention has a lot of assumptions. It has an assumption of a manual. It has an assumption of an infrastructure. It has an assumption of training, capacity building. And perhaps a single intervention needs to have different trainings, different strategies, different contexts for it to be feasible depending on the context. So the idea here then is to think about equity 
and its relationship to the other implementation outcomes. Cost, for example. An intervention developed, say, in setting A, could be if the setting A has more resources, has more um, providers uh, willing and able to be trained, the cost will be very different if you're talking about a rural setting with very low resource. So how is equity then affecting all of the other implementation of outcomes and how is all of that related to the uptake of that intervention? So some of the questions could be, you know, that some of us could study could be, for example, do organizations that serve lar large populations of racial and ethnic minorities achieve the same implementation outcomes, say fidelity, cost, sustainability, as those that serve predominantly non-Hispanic whites? What factors can contribute to inequities in implementation outcomes between organizations serving different populations? Which implementation strategies produce more equitable implementation outcomes among organizations serving different populations? So there are a number of areas of studies at the reach and how we can achieve inclusion and representation at reconfiguring the intervention so it is malleable and adaptive in expanding the science of adaptation so we can think about multiple levels of adaptation and investing in implementation trials that focus on reducing healthcare disparities. Here are some other interesting reads for you. And I wanna thank you for participating in this conversation. Please do email me, please do send a Twitter. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to learn more about your work and I would love to continue growing this field. Thank you very much.